thanks for joining me today for this Global Mapper tutorial session. And our topic today, as you saw, is going to be generating contours. A very commonly used tool. Uh, we hear from a lot of our customers about how this function is an important part of the software. In many cases, it's even the reason they purchased the software. And as you'll see as we go through a couple of different workflows today, we're going to look at this from a few different perspectives. It is a very simple process. First and foremost, it's important to introduce our source data. And we're looking at a terrain layer here. Uh, a question that is commonly asked is, can I generate or how do I generate contours from LiDAR data or similar point cloud data sets? And the simple answer to that is, well, you need to convert it. Uh, the base material for contour generation is a raster elevation layer, a gridded layer. So what you'll need to do with your LiDAR is generate a surface. And we will cover that in a future session, that process of generating a surface from LiDAR. But for today, we have our data in place and we're going to generate some contour lines. Process is initiated from the button in the toolbar where my cursor is located right now. You'll see this right up at the top, generate contours. And clicking the button brings up a dialog box. We're going to go through, it, as I said, a few different variations on this theme, um, looking at various settings that can be applied and maybe why you might uh, adjust some of these settings. The first prompt that we're seeing here, the first highlighted text you'll see at the top is to generate a name for this layer. Now there's obviously a pre-configured name here called generated contours, which you're more than welcome to stick with that if that works for you. My suggestion is if your intention is to generate contours with a known spacing, with a specific spacing, as we will, you'll want to apply that name. So in my case, my first contour layer that I'm going to generate today is going to be derived from five meter spacing. It's going to be a five meter contour layer. So I'm going to type in five meter contours and a little too lazy to spell out meters. So five meter contours. That allows me if I'm generating multiple layers to distinguish this from perhaps some other layers that, that, that I generate. So as you will see, the default spacing right below is five meters. That means the uh, vertical distance between the spacing of my lines will be five meters. Um, there's a couple of options here um, that pertain to what we define as the multiplier. Now what this means or what this allows us to do is to distinguish different contours based on our requirement perhaps for index contours. In this case and, and by default every fourth contour will be a little bit bolder. Now obviously this is just within the context of Global Mapper. If your workflow requires you to export these contours to a vector file this is not going to be relevant. But managing these contours within the context of Global Mapper we have the option to define an index contour both at four meters and then an even bolder one at eight meters and we'll see the consequences of that once we finish this process. We're going to leave those settings as they are. Um, we have an elevation range noted here. Now this is um, generated from what Global Mapper sees in my underlying data. The elevation range goes from 48 meters, just over 48 meters to 170. I can limit that if I want. I can define the, the uh, vertical extent of my contour lines. If I'm only interested in contours above 100 meters, I can change that 48.2 to 100 and I will just get the contours above my threshold level of interest. Uh, as you will see when we go through this process, the contours are assigned based on logical increments. I'm generating five meter contours, so my contours will be 5, 10, 15, 20, etc. Multiples of that value. I have the option to start the contour at the low value at the minimum value, it, it really wouldn't make much sense in a lot of, in most situations, to have your first contour be 48.2. Your next would then be five uh, meters more, which would, would be what? 53.2 meters. So it really doesn't make a great deal of sense. It's not very intuitive, but you do have that option checkbox right here. Um, Global Mappers ap applies logic to this starting at the whole number increment. The resolution of the analysis of my elevation data in order to generate contours is going to be derived from that native resolution. Right now I'm looking at a one meter horizontal resolution, X and Y axis uh, resolution. I don't have any reason to change that. Why would you? Well, let's say for instance, I was dealing with a very large area. Maybe my data is a little too high. The resolution is too high for uh, the type of contours I want to generate. You can essentially dumb this down by putting a larger number in here. So I could make these 10 meter resolution uh, or, or make the analysis 
that's derived from 10 meter resolution as opposed to one meter. The consequences of that would be the file size of the, the uh, resulting data will be smaller. It would be a lot faster in terms of its generation. And it may be appropriate if you're looking at a wide area as opposed to something localized to keep that resolution fairly low. Um, we have a few different options here. And again, I will come back and look at these in a few different contexts as we go through various flavors of this. But one that I want to show you now is the ability to generate spot heights. This is kind of a hidden function within our contour generation dialog box. Both the high and low points within my area are going to be designated uh, with a, a point feature. It's going to be embedded in my contour layer, but it is obviously going to be a point as opposed to lines. And I'm actually going to check that in this case. It's not going to be checked by default. I'm going to enable that and after we're done we'll search around and find where the high point is. high point is in most situations you'll be interested in the max elevation not so much the min but if you have an application for that maybe you're dealing with bathymetric contours that might be useful in that case um, the only other thing I want to point to now and again we will come back and look at some other variations is the option way at the bottom here the option to discard closed contour lines that are shorter than a certain distance now depending on the type of data you're working with you may find that uh, that there are contours generated based on localized anomalies within your data very small little circles little dots almost um, in fact I think I will leave this unchecked for my first go around so we'll see some of those uh, by checking this box we can eliminate the initial creation of those very, very small contours. I mean, they're really not necessary in the broad scheme of things, unless you're dealing again with something at a very localized level. But you can define what that distance threshold is. What would be an appropriate value? Well, there's no right or wrong answer to that. It may be a, uh, derived from the resolution of the data from your extent. So we're going to hold off on that for the time being, but I promise I'll come back and look at that again, and we will change that addressing perhaps some, some of the, uh, the uh, localized small contours that we generate. So with those settings applied, we'll simply click OK, and we'll wait. It shouldn't take too long. Uh, it's doing an analysis of my terrain, and as you can see, it has generated some contours. You can see that I'm superimposed on my terrain. To make it a little easier to see, I'm going to turn off the original terrain layer, and we can see them a lot more clearly now. These are vector line features derived from interpolation of elevation values, basically drawing lines connecting areas of equal, equal elevation as derived from my terrain layer. Now, there was a an embedded smoothing process that was applied. Obviously, if we did not smooth these contours, you would see essentially right angle lines, jagged lines, adhering to the pixel dimensions of the underlying layer. You will want to apply that smoothing. You can also apply smoothing as a post process. There's a vector smoothing tool in Global Mapper that's very appropriate, perhaps, you know, for this type of application. If your objective was to get contours that are aesthetically pleasing, you may want to initiate that smoothing process. What I'm going to do very quickly here is use my digitizer. I'm going to select a single line just as an example and you'll note where my cursor is located right here in the middle of the screen. You'll notice this contour is a little bit jagged and it's perhaps for aesthetics we want to smooth this. Now smoothing is a tool that can be applied to any vector line or vector polygon uh, and it's accessed from our right click menu. We go to um, move reshape there's a few different areas. This is one example, move, reshape, and you'll see smooth right here in this list. Now, if you look closely where I selected that line, you may have noticed a slight smoothing. Very difficult to discern with this resolution, but a slight smoothing. But maybe in this case, I want to repeat that process. Well, rather than having to go back to that menu again, I'm going to go up to my favorites list, which is a tool in Global Mapper that records tools that you've used in the past. And you can see smoothing is already listed here. I've used it before. So I can actually initiate this process by running that tool from the toolbar. And again, I ask you to look at this area to see if we can see any difference as I repeatedly click on this little star. And you will see every click makes that contour just a little bit smoother maybe a little more aesthetically pleasing or appropriate for our project, whatever project we're working on. So one of the other settings that I pointed out was the uh, option to remove those smaller polygons. And you can see some examples right here. Based on our localized data, again, if I turn on my terrain layer, we might see that in this, in this area. 
you can see there's a few different anomalies. It's kind of an area that's locally undulating, and perhaps those contours are a little distracting, not relevant in the broad scheme of things. So maybe we want to apply that setting where those are removed during the contour generation process. In order for me to do that, now that I have the contours generated, I may want to select one of these just to see what size it is. So using my info tool, this particular line is eight meters long, and you can see an eight meter long contour shows up as a fairly distinct dot right here on my screen. Let me go ahead and hit my escape button to deselect. But this little dot right here is eight meters. That's actually a line that's eight meters long. We may end up going, actually go a little longer. Let's take a look at this one. This is a 20 meter long contour. Uh, just based on that very rudimentary sample survey, I'm gonna establish a threshold of 25 meters. Now I'm gonna go back into the dialog box. I'm gonna turn off this layer. I'm gonna go back in using the same uh, procedure before. Let me deselect once again. This time I'm going to initiate that process. I'm not going to worry about my name this time, but you know how important that is in the broad scheme of things. Just in the interest of time, uh, I will not rename. But this time using all of the same settings as before, I'm going to go down and this time discarding my contours that are below 25 meters in length. And hopefully those examples that we saw will not be generated this time. We'll click OK. And when the process is finished, we should see, once again, turning off the terrain layer a little more clearly, you can see all of those outliers were gone. A few little small ones here, which may or may not be relevant, but you can see now you have that option to remove the contours that are unnecessary. While we're looking around at what we've just created, it is also worth noting that it has placed our point right here. Again, where my cursor is located, 170.683 meters is the high spot in this area. If we were interested in placing a communication tower or wanted to go somewhere with a really nice view, perhaps, we know where the high point of land is. So that's a, just a byproduct of our contour generation. That point is actually in the contour layer. If we were exporting our contours, let's say we were exporting them to a shapefile, we could choose just to export the lines. The point would not be exported in that layer if we chose not to export it separately. So while it's displayed in Global Mapper, it does not have to be retained if your workflow requires you to, uh, to export the data. It's worth um, making a note about labels here. You'll notice my contours do have labels. There is an option in the contour generation dialog box to assign a unit value uh, or a, 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 a unit of measurement. Meters or feet would be the logical ones. And you can see that has been applied in my case. These are dynamic labels. You'll see as I zoom in, they will be reassigned based on my zoom level, based on a certain logic that's applied in terms of positioning uh, based on line segments. So. Um, there's an ongoing project to, to look at labels and, and maybe make some improvements to this labeling process. But for now, what you're seeing on the screen is, is essentially the default labeling uh, uh, process that's applied. And you can turn off the labels. If you do not want to see those, you have the option to disable the labels. At the layer level, you can choose the option not to display your labels. Obviously, in most situations, you will want to keep those on. Now, another visual option that we applied and we talked about during the initial contour generation process was the indexing or the bold contours and I opted to uh, apply those bold contours in increments of four and even bolder contours in increments of eight and you can see those now applied here. Here's my uh, primary index contour, here's my secondary index contour and this is a convention in this type of topographic mapping so you can quickly see patterns, you can see those index contours a lot more clearly, a lot easier to follow especially at a high level where you can start to see those patterns in the contours and you can get a real uh, visual feel for the lay of the land and the area but even by allowing your eye just to follow those primary or, or important contours if you like. And again, I should stress, that's simply a visualization option that's applied internally within Global Mapper. Export these to Shapefile. You're just going to get lines, obviously. You can bring those into any other application as line features. Visual display is dictated just within, uh, within Global Mapper. Now, one other thing I want to show you here, and this is going off on a slight tangent, it's going to allow us to bring in a kind of a separate little workflow, is the ability to define uh, zoom level ranges. Now, why would that be appropriate with contours? Well, for illustration purposes, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to generate another contour layer, and I'm going to uh, turn off my spot elevations this time. Um, I will continue to discard the smaller ones in this case. I am going to change the contour interval to one meter, and I will rename this one just to distinguish it. So once again, one meter contours. 
and I, I can't stress enough how important it is when you're creating layers, when you're assigning names, make sure they're clear what you're leaving. There's, there's nothing worse than having a, a, a list of layers that will all have the same name or variations on the same name and you're not even sure what's there. Take the time uh, to label the layers appropriately so it keeps your, uh, yourself a little bit, or, uh, bit uh, better organized. So with these assigned, um, we'll click OK. Exactly the same settings will be applied. A little slower, simply because it is it is sampling those contours at a, a tighter interval. We're, we're asking it to generate many, many more contours, many more lines. So it's taking just a few seconds more to generate. And as you would expect, map looks a lot busier. Um, where our previous contour interval was five meters, this is one meter. We're getting a contour every one meter. Now why, why would I have done that? Or what's the reason for that? Obviously, it will be local application. When I get down to this level, um, a one meter contour is appropriate. I can see the lay of the land more clearly. If I was simply to use the five meter contours at this level, I'm not getting the same detail. I'm compromising for this scale, uh, the information I'm able, able to derive from my contour lines. So I've got two separate contour layers. Now what I'm gonna do just for organization purposes, I'm gonna first group these together. Now in the overlay control center or the control center over on the left side, I've selected my one meter and five meter contour layers. I want to right click. I want to choose the option to group. Now this is not unique to contours. This can be done with any layer or any combination of layers where we assign multiple layers to a group, assuming that they have something in common. And I'm just going to generically call this contours. And we'll click OK. Now what you'll see is we now have a single listing on our overlay control center with my contours that I can collectively turn on and turn off or if necessary I can individually control. Now final thing I'm going to do here with this workflow is I'm going to define a zoom level range for each of those two layers. My five meter contours which I know is appropriate when I zoom out maybe not so much when I zoom in, but when I'm further out, I like the distri distribution of my lines, but I want to transition as I zoom in to my one meter contours. So for each of these two layers, I'm going to double click. I'm going to go to the options and I'm going to go to map zoom. Now there are multiple ways of assigning a zoom level range. I like to use the scale option. And having done this before, uh, just by way of, of preparing, I'm going to uh, assign my five meter contours to be visible um, from a scale, we'll, we'll keep this as is, we're probably not going to get close to this scale, but I want them to disappear when we get down to the 1 to 2,000 range. And again, if you're doing this yourself, you can note the scale in a ratio form at the bottom of your screen here. If you want to derive this from a scale, just zoom in to the point where you think that would be an appropriate transition. That's what I'm doing right now. And again, having researched this before I found that 1 to 2000 is a good transitional zone. Now if I click OK nothing will change on the screen. If I zoom in it gets to a point where they will disappear. I've established a threshold zoom level range for that layer. I'm going to do the same for my one meter contours but in this case I do, don't want them to appear until I get to that scale. So it's exactly the same procedure. Double click, go to map zoom, uh, this time I can actually go with the below map scale option. So we're going to go to 2000 here. Or you could define this in, for multiple layers. You could have several different contour layers that appear and disappear based on whatever zoom level threshold that you want. So a seamless zooming process will generate contours that are appropriate for a particular view. Um, this should be OK. In this case, we'll click OK, as I said. We will turn both layers on again, and with a roll of the drums, as I zoom in, we should automatically transition from 5 meter contours to 1 meter contours. And again, now that we know this is an option, we can apply this in several steps, if necessary, with a single line item in my overlay control center, but with multiple subset of contours now available to me. And that can be collapsed and again, turned on or off collectively. Final thing I want to show you in relation to contours, we're going to go back into the contour generation, or cut back into the original layer, back into the contour generation dialog box once again. And you may have noticed, I didn't pay I didn't uh, focus on this when we were introducing the topic, but we have the option here to specify a contour at a height, a single contour if you like. So rather than defining a contour interval by checking this box, we're asking it to generate one contour line 
everywhere in, on this map view that is a particular elevation, that's going to be what uh, the contour will be based on. Now, in this example, let's say I'm interested in just a 150-foot contour. Maybe there's a regulatory threshold uh, above which I cannot perform, so maybe I can't build or there's you know uh, restrictions on activity of, of whatever kind. Maybe you're looking for those high areas. Maybe you want to delineate everything that's above a certain elevation. Perhaps you're putting in a wind, wind turbine or something of that type. Uh, this can be defined now by, based on a specific contour as opposed to a, a contour interval. Now, before I go any further, there is another option here that allows me to generate an area feature or a polygon or a series of polygons, as you'll see, that enclose this area. These can be used in combination to generate polygons that enclose areas above a defined elevation. So once again, with 150 meters as my single contour and the option to generate areas, I will click OK. And when the process completes, I should see off screen a little bit here. Let me zoom out just a, 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 a short section. A, a couple of polygons here, well, a single polygon. There might be others. Let me turn off the terrain to make it a little bit clearer. Here we go. This, for my area of interest, encloses the areas that are over 150 meters above sea level. So not generating contours, but it's using the contour tool to do something that's useful for a lot of different applications. These are polygons. These are vector polygons that can be exported into uh, any other uh, uh, supported vector format and used for whatever analysis. Maybe you want to see what, what uh, jurisdictional activity, activity or jurisdictional boundaries are in here, perhaps what properties uh, are inside. So these are, again, can be, you can interact with other vector layers, but using these as the defined boundary of, of your potential project. So those are just some examples of using contours. Uh, the basics is very, very simple. We go back to our, our simple generated contour lines. A few different options here to limit the contours uh, based on size, to smooth them if you, not, if you like for aesthetic purposes, uh, limiting the zoom level range so they work better within the context of Global Mapper, and if you need, ultimately exporting them to a, an external layer. Hopefully this was useful, and check back with our next Global Mapper Tutorial.